EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online. Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more travelling or boardroom bookings, we bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information centre for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended Act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees Agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22.5 million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties. Increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees. Effective transformation and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level 4 broad-based black economic empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labour Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. Good morning, everyone attending the meeting today, this webinar, where Mr. Charles Kinnear will have a discussion on the COVID-19 and the impact of Level 4, as well as Level 3 that opened this morning. Today is the 1st of June, 2020. We are reporting here out of our virtual offices in Pretoria. We also have virtual offices throughout South Africa, amongst others, in KZN, in Pumulanga, in the Western Cape, in Johannesburg, and two more virtual offices in Pretoria East. So again, thank you everyone for attending here today. If you need any more information, please feel free to visit our website. That's www.eecms.co.za. Remember, as mentioned, this recording will then also be placed onto YouTube. 
feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You go and log on to YouTube. Just search for EE CMS and all the relevant videos and training sessions will be placed on YouTube after this meeting as well. So from a Chile Pretoria, thank you very much everyone attending here today. I will be handing over to Mr. Charles Kinnear. He is based in Cape Town and he will then provide you with more information on the COVID-19 level four, as well as the Gazette level three. Charles, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you very much for your time as well. And you are the host as of now. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, out of Cape Town. Uh, we had quite heavy fog this morning, but what it is winter time and we need to accept it. And it is nice. I love winter. It's good and it's good for Cape Town anyway. We need the rain. We definitely need rain. That is so important. However, okay, we are now in level three since 12 o'clock last night. That is what the uh, the Gazette tells us. Um, not much has changed so far. Um, there's basic things that open up. One, obviously, some people are very really excited. They can go to the bottle store or to Tops as they're making a lot of uh, jokes about it with the big trolleys. I've seen the WhatsApp coming through from some of my friends and so on. Um, yes, so there is some good news and some some rules just stay the same. Um, and the reason why, the, the, the pandemic is still here. The virus is still here with us. And we're going into a very vulnerable time now. The why I'm saying that is we're going into winter, deep winter, and where everybody is going to maybe be infected by a flu. And it's not generalized as the COVID virus. So, uh, Corona, fly away, please. That's all I'm praying the whole time. But see, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be a miracle thing that's going to disappear. An uh, old lady said to me sometime, she was at that stage 85. She was born somewhere in the early 1900s. And there was the Spanish flu. And you know, I always, when somebody sneezes, sneezes next to me, I would say, bless you. And you know, I never knew where it came from. And one day she said to me, my child, come sit next to me. I would you know, in the 1918s, 1918, there was the Spanish flu. And everybody that sneezes, we used to see as somebody's going to die. And then we will say, bless you. And that is where that thing came from to say, somebody sneezes and you say, bless you. Still a good thing, I think, but that is where it originated from. Anyway. And that, that was now something that really tickles me when I sit with COVID-19 and I said to myself, wow, we might be sitting with the same thing here also. So, yes. All right, let me share some. I'm going to take you through a PowerPoint presentation. I um, might be not patient or you might not find everything as you want to in the same, uh, or want to read everything, but it will be available, as Peter mentioned, on, on, the, uh, on the YouTube, and you can go and revisit everything with me, with Peter, and all of you questions together. And remember, I know in, in one moment like now, there might be questions thereafter. That's why I'm, I'm providing you with my email address. You can WhatsApp me, you can phone me, you can send me a fax, no problem. I will help as much as I can. If I don't know the answer, I will go and find the answer for you. So that is how far it goes. And yes, I did receive a couple of people phoning me or uh, email me to help them with the workplace plan and all that. Um, and unfortunately, I don't sit in your place. I'm not in your environment. So I cannot really go and write a, a, a workplace plan for you. It's only you, but that one is so generic that you can just fill in what the requirements are for these uh, for the work plan, uh, workplace plan, and then you can take it from there. Um, and I think you can only uh, 
you can only uh, obviously i just want to uh, invite some more um participants uh, welcome to peter and nastasha um you will you will always have more questions so email address is there my cell phone number is there my fax number is there and we will try the best what we can do and like i said this presentation is available like peter said on youtube subscribe and you will have it all right now first of all remember the workplace plan did not fall away the one that we started just after level five picked in we had a policy and day after we had a work back to work and that was for level four back to work uh, the the startup back manual still available just email peter or one of his delegates um and they will assist you with a copy of that um make the arrangements with them uh, it, it must go through their company um so at the bottom line is you still need that workplace plan all right remember that is part and parcel of your health and safety committee also now besides that the liquor stores open and the cigarettes are still banned and i see the minister of health was having a no smoke or a no tobacco day with the world so yes good luck to them um i don't think you're going to wish it away i'm not a smoker i used to be a smoker but yes i do not see the the reason why they took away the cigarettes or the tobacco uh tobacco is there something that's for ages with us it comes out of the ancient world and years before we even start with nice cigarettes and cigars and that thing so anyway all right i'm not going to debate that i leave that to british tobacco uh, company to to must sue the government it appears to me they are going to for a lawsuit now um and how successful they're going to be i don't know all right the workplace plan like i said it's still there there's a checklist um there is 10 things that you still that's critical critical for this level three also and it will go through till level one and don't think you're going to wish it away it will remain there because as i can mention it makes part and parcel first of health and safety secondly it's also part and parcel of your employment rules obviously if you want to discipline an uh, employee there must be rules in place and it must be reasonable and it must be understood and it, all those kind of things and it's like i repeat myself now again like i said i think two weeks ago it is in the labor relations act section eight subsection seven um from a to e uh, that you can go in there and you will see create a rule and that's the rule of the company now the same is here this workplace plan is also as a rule for you rules that the employees must adhere to now on these rules of of, of uh, the workplace plan the most important for me here is number employee health and safety training not the entire health and safety training the segment on COVID 19 or coronavirus within the workplace remember now on level three we're coming back everybody's coming back now it's only people with uh, e um, uh, uh, illnesses that that's long-standing that's a chronic illness uh, um, like asthma like diabetes and then also people of over the age of 60. Um, they remain vulnerable people and the government advised to rather keep them and work them from home let them work from home there's nothing wrong with that and i think we have to adopt this new uh, um, lifestyle also because this is a lifestyle we're not going to get past very quickly and maybe it's going to remain like that maybe our office space is going to shrink now all right but number four on this checklist now we'll go through it again is the most important we do have a training session and i think peter will elaborate or later on send some emails about it that we can do training via zoom we can help you where you're sitting in your boardroom with all your staff as long as you do social distancing very important all right the first of june 2020 south africa will be placed on level three which we are already in and all business in the other um, other entities there's somebody coming in eugene welcome will be permitted to operate save for a few exemptions as part of the reopening of businesses companies will be required to have a workplace plan 
to ensure that safety, the safety of employees below the firm pro provide 10 key aspects that must be covered in the plan. Risk assessment, screening process, emergency protocol, and then, like I said, employee health and safety training. The health and safety directive issued by the government makes it mandatory, mandatory. It means by law for all employers to train their staff on the content of the directive and the manner in which employers intend to implement the directive in their uh, respective workplace. Now, in this directive issued by the government, they also are talking about conversant and employee about this training of, of, of COVID-19 must be conversant to the knowledge that he consume and that he can utter it in a very comfortable way of showing that he do understand and do have all the knowledge about what needs to be known in terms of the health and safety of COVID-19. The PPE, obviously the first thing, the mask. Two masks must be provided. Now that's your material mask. Two masks must be provided by the employer. If you do have the normal disposable one, which is a once of use, this one, you have it ready somewhere that they can collect it. And remember, I'm going to waste management now with this and also with our paper towel. Now, social distancing, like I said, um, there was a couple of uh, participants last time uh, joining us that I've seen. They were sitting in a boardroom, but there was quite good distance between the parties in that boardroom. Well done for them. I enjoyed to see that. Social distancing, the same, like I've mentioned now, there must be that 1.5 meters. Uh, there's a lot of questions coming out of, of social distancing. I'm sitting in a call center, my co colleagues sit around me. How do we social distancing here yeah, and cannot remove my mask and that kind of thing? And I said, you know, there's other things that you can also use. You can use a shield. You don't have to use the shield and the mask. It's all about what is the area or the environment that you need to. If it's a high risky environment, I would say yes, then you put on. The, the mask and the shield, but the, the, the shield is not set in somewhere in, in the act or the directive. It is talking, talking about a mask. Now the mask is very much, not the EN, uh, is it NE, NE95, uh, that's the medical one, surgical, surgical uh, mask. You can have a cloth mask and there's a lot of beautiful masks out there. I've been in the mall yesterday quickly and I've passed a there are tables with masks and of any kind, any, yeah, any flavor of <laughs> hygiene. Employers must maintain a certain high level of hygiene standards. Waste management. This is a disposable. That means when I'm finished, where will I drop it? Just in a normal dustbin? No, because the cleaner will go there and maybe then take away the, the stuff that he wants to go for recycling, the other for something else. And this one do have the virus on because might be outside, might be inside, we don't know. So treat these things, your, your, your paper towels, your masks that you throw it away, please use that as waste management in terms of that is your uh, medical waste. Communication, Employee, employers must ensure that they have a communication plan in place to inform employees of any updates regarding the protocols in the workplace, as well as any other information as required by government. And that's why we're having these weaponries, is to inform you about any changes. After today's session here, I am going into talking with the government and see what they're doing. I mean, there was on Friday, there was this briefing session from various ministers, um, even DGs, the uh, chief inspector from uh, employment and labor that was also on there. So uh, 
it is very important that you keep on communicating with your staff, informing them. And I've seen some beautiful uh, uh, creative posters in the workplace. I've been visited a couple of companies. And I must say, I, I was very proud to see what they put up and the effort they're doing there for sanitization. Um, you don't have to grab the bottle. It's a little stand. You press your feet on the pedal and you hold your hands and there comes the sanitation. Remember, sanitize this, uh, social distancing in a mask. Very important. Then the uh, appointment of compliance manager. Now, the, the, the director talks about a manager. I say, man, it's an officer because in the, in the health and safety environment, we're talking about a safety officer. Um, that kind of um, a safety rep uh, is an officer. So the same here. Now, the directive is very clear on this. All employers must. It's not you. You must, maybe, or you can think about it. No. It's a must. Must appoint a compliance manager officer to each of the workplaces. Now, if you do have branches, you will then use at every branch, there will be a compliance officer. And then with your head office. And that compliance officer must be equipped with all, with all the knowledge required in terms of this pandemic. COVID-19, all the directors, he, he must have all knowledges from the first gazette that rolled out, and he must understand the gazette that was published and signed off by the minister. Right, that is the point that's still in place, that is there. And like I said, is everybody can come back to work, except your hairdressers. And we'll get to that now, now, but say no. Um, and Obviously, you guys selling tobacco, uh, but the rest, like in a, a retail store, like in a hardware store, like in a garage, whatever, uh, supermarket, they're all back. They can do so. All right. Um, there's still a, debut, a, the, 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 um, a discussion about, and I would not say it's confusion or what, but there's a discussion about restaurants, whether they can open, that you can go and collect maybe your, your food, or will it remain through Mr. Delivery, Mr. Whoever, um, and um, what you call it, um, Uber, Uber Eats and that, so yeah. Uh, but support these guys, shame, they, they need also some support. Uh, that is the latest that I received from government um, and that was published on i think friday afternoon the number of tests proportions no positive proportions uh, the number of pos uh, uh, positive effects you will see uh, yeah the western cape taking the toll again i don't know why but yes um, most probably there will be an answer later and then come the eastern cape that's our president, His Excellence, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa. Okay, his address, I just published it on here, that he touched on certain things, especially to say the prohibition of to remain in a place where will include the sale of tobacco products, all gatherings except funerals, which is limited to 50 in, uh, attendees, air travel, uh, except for locally, for business purposes, which will be uh, faced in conference events and entertainment sorry guys virgin active is not going to open so take the the, the the street walk why not churches or place of prayer will be opening i see there's a debate between the, the churches on the stage with government to say how they're going to let it open and how they're going to manage now the flux also of people that want to go to a church or to a prayer room or to a prayer place and they need to then put in certain disciplines. Those disciplines has not been published, or did I, did, well, I could not place my hand on any of those. All right. The others that will be remain closed is your restaurants, bars, and taverns, except for food delivery and collection. Like I said, there, there was mentioning of maybe opening the restaurants, but that's only in your state. So don't, don't go on it. Don't bank for it. And then accommodation places. Yes, there are 
I see there is some other accommodations also where you basically rent a room and you don't get anything or interact with them and they're separate, but that, that, uh, that I'm not going to intervene with. Um, there's nothing given as any guidelines on this stage. The, the thing about that I'm very worried about is mines. The mines do have a lot of people working for them and they normally do have a compound or the hostels and um, how they're going to do that, that's a very, very good um, question to ask them because I think to manage that health and safety, it's, it's quite a huge thing. So um, I feel for the guys in the mine, they want to do business, they want to work also the, the, the employees, so we must still consider what's happening in the world. It's not only South Africa, remember, this is a global pandemic. All right, then there is the uh, restart up and phasing of arrangements will be needs in place of every workplace. Now that there's more working uh, um, employees coming back to the work, you need to now critically go and assist your place of work. And I hope you do, you've done it before the 1st of June, not after the 1st of June. Um, one of the participants that um, uh, contacted me by email, he said to me, you know, Charles, one of, uh, well, there's a couple of inspectors that visit one of my depots. I'm not sure, I think it was in KwaZulu-Natal. He said, and I must get my ducks in a row here. And I said to him, you better do so. Because the, on, Mon on Friday, the minister was quite frank to say, you know, my, in, my office is now opening also the 1st of June. And I will ensure that my inspectors are going to inspect the workplace. If we get maybe a rumor or an um, uh, informing, uh, informant to tell us that the workplace is not in place, we're going to inspect it. And sorry, we will close it if it's not according to standard. So if you do not adhere to the directive, you will face the consequences of being shut down. Social distancing, uh, you can see it's repeatedly a very, very high concern. Um, and shown, I've seen these queues standing for, for Sasa and that, uh, oh. But I hope uh, nothing much happens out of that. Um, <clears throat> the, the South African national borders will remain closed. So no transportation outside unless it's government organized. On the 23rd of May, a Department of Home Affairs media statement confirms that subject to meeting certain conditions, South Africans may leave the country only for the following. Work, study, family reunion, to take up the permanent residency or to receive a medical attention in a other country, not in South Africa. All right. On this stage, yes, you can travel um, by air. Uh, when from Cape Town to Pretoria, to Johannesburg, Versa Visa, Durban, you name it, but mainly for business purposes and then for school and that. Face, face the return to teaching and learning at government schools. Wow, there's a lot going on here. This topic is a, is a very hot topic. The Minister of Education postponed a meeting now recently and uh, it seems to me the children is not going back today, but only on the 8th of June. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but this was given by the minister and, and I'm not going to elaborate on it. You can keep your eye on it. Um, and maybe something different happens. Um, I'm, I'm not really comfortable with the opening of school so suddenly, I'll be honest. But however, um, most probably I've seen somebody sent me in WhatsApp about their school, how uh, they will plan to accept children and they do have a, a quarantine area and all that kind of, that looks really nice, but I think it's going to be very traumatic on the children as such, because this is not the normal thing that's gonna happen. It's just, yeah, well. Okay, next, uh, what you need to know is basics of what I said now, and here is on level three, Domestic air travel, sale of liquor, uh, all construction will now be allowed, all clothing sales, that means you retail basically, all household appliances sales. Um, there is, I've seen also domestic workers can go back to work, provided that they do have some, that they can be safe to travel, 
use public transport or whatever the case may. Before in level four, it was only for domestic workers that sleep in or being a mind carer um, uh, or being of after an elderly or a person that's in a wheelchair or disabled uh, that could come to work. But now in level three, they open and they say, no, domestic can come back to work. Um, provided they do have the safe traveling or public transport, etc. My domestic stay at home because she do have children and I'm still worried about children. And the children, what is the effect on them? All right. What is the in and what not? What is no, no, you will be allowed to exercise any time of the day. No more in the morning. It's now any time of the day, not in groups. You must still have social distancing. The gym is not open. People will be able to exercise at any time during the day, providing that this is not done in groups. That's what the president said. You will be allowed for alcohol. People will be allowed to buy alcohol for home consumption under strict conditions on specified days, Monday to Thursday, 9 till 5. That's the, that's the shopping hours, if I can say that. You will not be allowed to buy cigarettes or any tobacco product. Even Vi Viper is out. Ramaphosa said that the sale of tobacco products will remain prohibited under level three due to the health risk associated with smoke. Which is quite uh, questionable because I think if you're an old smoker, is it no, 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 not too late to say it's a health, but anyway. All gatherings will remain prohibited, except for funerals with no more than 50 people, and the police will monitor the whole process, or meetings in the workplace, for work purposes. Ramaphosa said, people will be required to stay at home, especially those over 18 and people with underlying conditions, chronic diseases. And when we do this, when we talk about tell the elderly, the person over 60s, that's not old, but that's the superior age, and your employee with an underlining condition, how do you approach them? Employer, be sensitive, please. Remember, they are humans the same as you are. They do have feelings. They have a self-esteem also, which we need to also understand and have respect for one another. So out of this whole thing is when you call a person in, don't call them in by group. Don't call them on a telephone. Maybe say, listen, um, can we have a Zoom or come into the office? We can discuss it. Or if they're happy with a telephone call, it's fine. But then do it privately. So nobody, you know how people can gossip. I don't have to tell you. All right. The no, no. No social gathering, no um, interprovincial travel, mask wearing will remain compulsory. Compulsory. High risk economy activities such as restaurants, pubs, lodges, and hotels remain closed. The sale of tobacco products, gyms and fitness centers remain closed. And conference, remember conference events and gatherings is the same as when you having a meeting with staff and there is not good social distancing, you can be in trouble. You will not allow to do following and that you can read for yourself. That like you, so is, I was mentioning about the uh, um, people cutting our hair and looking well after our grooming session with the guys with the beards. You know, you go sit there in the barber and they cut you nicely, everything, you look groomed. Unfortunately, it's still closed. All right. So, hair cut and nail done. Nah -uh, sorry, no, you have to do your own, ma'am. Sorry, it's out. You have to do your own. You may be allowed to fly for business travel only. You will be allowed to go to any store. 
you will, it will still have to, to wear a mask and wash your hands and sanitize whenever you enter any place. Even in your car, have some sanitizer in there. So at least then you know you're protected. You may send your child back to school. And like I said, there's, there's still a debate about it. There's still a debate. So keep your eye on the news. Listen to when this announcement on 403, DSTV channel 403, that is ENW something news. Uh, I never can remember the abbreviation. However, okay. You are like, uh, likely to be allowed to return to work. We do have that only one restriction about uh, going back to work, and that is for people with underlying conditions and then people older than 60. Somebody asked me also, you know, I've got a guy that is 62, 63, I can't remember. Um, can he come back to work? He's healthy. There's nothing wrong. And he said, man, I can come and work and I'll take this, the punishment if, if something happens. Well, I would say for your own safe, uh, safety, make an agreement by the, by the, between the two of you to say, I accept to come back to work, though I was informed that I must rather work from home. That's a, that's a new thing, work from home. So make that agreement and at least if, if that person being contracted with the disease, then you can say, I told you, I warned you, you came to work, there was nothing about it, but you accepted by yourself that you can be contracted with the virus. We don't know how it happens, but anyway, it can happen anyway. So everybody is now back to work. Basically, the domestics also. Um, it's only those two that I don't see quickly. All right, domestic, like I said, workers can now return under level three. Um, the nine things that close contracts still not allowed. I can repeat this now over and over, but that is what it's all about. Is we must remember, I think. The, the, the government, if you listen to them, they are talking about very much about social distancing and also the mark. And, and um, please ensure that your, that your place is 100% in play. Um, and when I say in play, it must be with the standards that's given by the, by the directive. And we've got this generic plan that you can use. There's other plans also. I wrote a couple of things, um, standard, um, can I say, basically code of conduct, um, which you also can can get from me. Um, I do have a couple of those um, templates that you can use. I cannot tailor cut it for you. It's impossible because I don't know your working environment. I don't know how big is your, your workforce, nothing whatsoever. So it's only you that can be the author of that proper plan. All right, just some, um, I think it will be good for you just to put up something like this. Uh, you can cut and paste. The curfew lifted. We knew that there was a curfew um, at 8 o'clock in the, in the evenings till 5 in the morning. That's been lifted. Um, cloth mask must be still there. Exercise all day, no group social distancing. No group. No social public gatherings, no public fitness centers, and except professional athletes. Now, the golfers, that's not a contact sport. I think you can go back to the golf, uh, golf course. Um, um, so just don't be, just social distancing is okay. I think that will be, the pub will not be open. That I can guarantee you. Okay, and, and, and like I said, Minister of, of uh, Police, Mr. Mr. Becky clearly, he was very, very much about to say, you cannot go and visit your friends, your, fr your, your girlfriend, um, or your family. Social uh, visiting is not allowed, he said. Now, there was also the other thing that was questioned about the directives, the latest one. Um, about this, this, if I get, what, how can I go to spa, but I can't go to Yanya next door to me and to say hello, as long as we 
have social distancing. So I don't know how they're going to police that. Uh, I really don't know how they're going to really um, lay the rules out of that. But now the minister is here saying, and he was by, uh, he was very much emphatic on the, on Thursday. Social visits are not allowed coming June the first. Speaking at the at, at justice crime prevention and security cluster briefing, he said that the regulations which were gazetted at later in the day dictated that which activities were allowed and social visitings were not among those. I hope you will read the regulations. 33 three very closely and go read it. So you see there, you go and read uh, uh, regulation 33 and visiting your friends, your peers, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, that's not the peer in the regulation 33. So watch out for that. Regulation 33 states that people may move uh, about under the following conditions, performing any service allowed on the level three. Plumbers, delivering couriers couriers work there already in level four travel to and from work by permit talk about travel to and from work now there was a debate last two weeks which the minister becky clearly said that you still need a permit but i don't find it in the amendment gazette that you still need a permit According to me, the permit is only valid still for level four and five. That was the, the purpose for that. Now, why, why now a permit? Why, there's no more essential services, basically. Well, that's a question I put in front of them because I disagree. I will ask when they put me in a roadblock, where in this gazette do you see that I need a permit? Tell me that. Although I will have one year just to save myself from a, from a fine, um, I, I do not understand understand the reason why they find fine people and arrested people. But anyway, okay, leave that for another day for debate. Uh, buy permitted goods and services, move children as allowed, obviously, to school and back if that gate is going to open which is really a gate for me i'm worried exercise between 6 a.m and 6 p.m attend the place of worship and attend the school of learning institution when these open right then our potential hotspots in south africa you can see there is a couple of them especially here in the western cape going into the eastern cape and so forth but the bigger one is here in the western cape and then eastern cape and it's quite problematic now there was a question also can an employee in south africa withdraw from the workplace over covid 19 concerns and what is the answer to that well talking about bringing in the mine side also the mine health and safety act and the occupational health and safety act granted employees the right to withdraw from a dangerous working place disaster Ma management act the dma regulations or related directives could also confer this right when drafted now there's nothing yet that i know of but yes employees turning to the work from the COVID 19 lockdown will need to show responsible, uh, reasonable justific justification if they halt work on the basis that they are exposed to the virus. And they halt work because of the exposure to the virus. Legal provisions allowing employees to withdraw from a, a, a arduous working situation uh, that could, in the context of COVID-19, be open to abuse by unprincipled uh, employees or trade unions now yeah we consult as consultative for senior uh, council and he said that we are we we need to be very cautious because people might abuse 
somebody that do a misconduct now suddenly goes and say, but my working environment is not safe. I want to be a whistleblower. Department of Labor, come here. And we must watch out for, for these. And that's why if your things are in place, if your directives, your policies, your work plan is in place, this will supersede it. That will, that will cover it and say, how can you come and say there's problems here? There's enough um, sanitation. There's enough done to, to keep everybody on the social distancing. You do have two masks. Everything is there. We comply. So be aware of that, please. And you can read this, uh, it's a long thing that, uh, that I wrote about it, but that you can read for your own time. I'm not going to, to elaborate on that now, suddenly. Um, now, Elmi Duplessis, I read this article from the pitfalls of emergency laws and regulations. We don't have clarity on the nature of the directive. In the hierarchy of legislation, they are below regulation. They might be laws, but they are not legislation. Oh, that, that's heavy. That's heavy. However, you can also read what's his opinion about it and about the disaster management. It's only things that are brought up just to empower you with knowledge, with, with something that you can argue for yourself, maybe, or for your colleagues, or understand it better. Okay, then there's a new transport rules also for South Africa during the uh, during lock, uh, level three lockdown. And now the, the, the transport minister, he published a number of new directives which allowed you for increase of traveling. <coughs> Sorry. In a separate directive, Babalula indicated that some rail services will be al allowed to operate during level three lockdown. This includes the following Praza routes. Pinarspur to Pretoria Central, Cape Town, Southern Line to Simonstown, East London to Berlin, and Port Elizabeth to Eitenhagen. Uh, any other commuter services? The directive also stated that the Gau train will continue commuter services on the following routes. Park Station to Hatfield and Southampton to OR Tumbo International Airport. Because the airlines is opening, they're going to fly again. Back in business. Air travel, there's a whole thing about air travel that he talks about and how you must be picked up and that you must be permitted to go outside. Uh, they, I think there you will need uh, some kind of have a David still um, to say why you're traveling from Cape Town to Joburg or from Joburg to Durban or whatever the case might be. But anyway, you can read it later through in detail. Then the license directive also in a directive published by the minister outlined the um, validity of a motor vehicle license and registration during the South Africa 21 day lockdown. The lockdown has made it difficult for motorists to renew. Now, people, essential, essential staff, they still do have that essential certificate. They can still go to Department of Transport to get the licenses and those things done. So they, they're covered. But this one has been extended um, and, and there's another 90 days extender also on driver's license, license, your vehicle license and registration. 90, 90 days. This extends to learner, dri uh, learner license, driver's license, temporary driver's license, motor vehicle license disc, a temporary permit, roadworthy certificates, and professional driver's permit. That means your, your taxi drivers, your Uber drivers, and that they need a professional driver's permit. In addition, motor trade. A uh, number licenses that expire during this period have had their, their validity uh, extended for a further six months. Further six months. You must take note of this. A motor trade number is typically 
used to operate an unregistered and unlicensed vehicle. That's that little piece of paper that you get when you buy a new car or even a second hand car. And I just put it up in the back of your, of your windscreen. Um, and that is now extended for six months. Though it expired, it's still valid. You must remember. All right. It is in the Gazette and you can get it there. Now, the issue about staff. Okay. There was really a problem with fiber connection. Apparently, somewhere along the line, something went wrong and they couldn't process all the applications. But now May is open still, and April has been finalized. I know there's a little few, I'm working on one UIF, um, I think I'm working on one company and one individual. Uh, no, I'm lying now. I'm working on four companies and one individual that's still struggling with the UI19 to be submitted and accepted as an individual, and the other one is the others is tax application. Now, Department of uh, Employment and, and Labor said, sorry, we want to pay now. We do have the capacity to pay the employees directly because we found some dodgy people was out there and took the money for themselves. Now, I don't know about it. There was nothing confirmed um, so far, but the minister was quite adamant about it. He said, we're going to pay the employees, provide them with provide us with the banking details, we're going to pay them. Now what was happening in level um, five and four, you as the employer were supposed to pay, to claim it from TASH. TASH is your temporary employment relief system. Now you will claim that money, you will then have to pay it over to the employee and keep the POP, that means pre proof of payment and submit it later on back to the Department of Employment and Labor. They will verify it and say, okay, that employee is paid, thank you very much. That's how it used to work. Now Department of um, Employment and Labor say, no, we want to pay the, the employees directly. We want to ensure it's done. It's in their bank account, no debate. No, because I can see also there's going to be some boxing rings opening maybe after COVID or now when the CCMA is operating very really low scale, but yes, it's op operating. The part of the la labor is open today. So yeah, there might be a boxing ring coming open here also. So if this is the case, I would say accept, 100%. So if that is the case, why must employers then first pay the employee in advance and then claim the tax. So no, you can just pay your portion and say no tax UIF, they will pay you directly, don't worry, thank you. Well, Minister from Employment and, and Labor, I hope that's going to work because some of my employers, we do, my company runs a couple of uh, payrolls also, where my employers said, no, 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 we're going to advance this money uh, to them already and we will then get it from TARS and that will satisfy us. I said, no, that's fine. It was a really good gesture from them. If they can do it, if they're in the capacity of to do so. Um, but with this new system, yeah, I think the burden or the, the stress is not so much on the employer then to advance the money and that. And also on the other side, you must remember that the money from TARS must not go through your, your, your payroll because your payroll will automatically put that into the tax calculation. So you must have it separate. Remove it from your payroll, don't include it in the payroll because it is not subjected to any tax. Any UIF payment is not subjected to any tax. All right, there is the Labor Department said workers will now be paid directly by the unemployment insurance fund so if um, there's new documents also i showed last week um, uh, also another uh, kind of uh, guide that i developed on what kind of forms you need etc now if you want that i can email it to you to send me your email address and i'll do so all right 
and question and answer. And that's now for my side. Thank you very much. Um, I've not seen so uh, so much of uh, Peter. I think you will come in here if you've seen some of the questions already raised. Um, but like I said, there's my email address. Please, there's no, there's Charles Kinnear, one word, at apcorlawinc.co.za. The only dots that's in there is after apcorlawinc at .co.za. So don't put dots there in Charles Kinnear, then the email will never come to me. Please. All right. There's my cell phone number. There's also my fax number. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask me questions by email. Um, um, the, the, well, as soon as I can help somebody, I'll do so. So, uh, yes, uh, the floor is yours. Is there any questions, uh, Peter? Uh, Charles, thank you very much for your time. Um, yes, there's a couple of questions. We'll, we'll go through them just now. Uh, just wanted to inform everyone, uh, look, there's more than 80 companies currently attending. I know that there's a couple of companies that that, that basically does uh, do not have the policies as yet. I got to remember, we did mail you the quote, the policies, it's 2490, that's 2490 Rand ex -bat. Uh If you'd like us and Charles to assist and help and draft those starter pack policies so that you know that your business can be operative, we had three clients in the past three weeks that underwent investigations by the Department of Employment and Labor, all three of them were cleared 100% to proceed with their operations and their business. Okay, so the policies that we worked on the past couple of weeks, uh, it's 100% a-okay by the Department of Employment and Labor. Okay, so if you need more information on that, just to uh, Pop me an email, cp at eecms.co.za and say, Peter, you know what, please provide us with more information. We would like to proceed with the purchasing of the policies. Uh, that being said, you know what, Charles, maybe just a question from our side. Uh, we are here in the office now and uh, we have a couple of, of, of people here that, that also raised the question. Um, if you talk about a lot of business, a lot of houses are in um, other complex areas and or security estates and the majority of security estates including ours basically tell us that um, we are still not allowed to have any either domestic worker and or gardener to come onto the premises into the estate can you maybe elaborate on that because i think that the problem there charles and to all the delegates is that uh, either there's misunderstanding between the Gazette and what is happening. I mean, we've seen the past couple of weeks the difference between a Gazette and how one person interprets uh, the, the Gazette according to how another person interprets it. It's two complete different things. Can you maybe elaborate on that? And then I will go through the questions from the delegates and then we'll proceed. You know, Peter, yes. Um... I, I had that same question last week raised by one of my colleagues, um, which is a client of mine, um, and she said to me, you know, we're also staying in a security complex, and um, uh, our security complex said no domestic and no gardeners will be allowed. Now, well, lucky on their side, they, the, the complex do have their own gardening facility, but I mean, um, my garden's services is back to normal they are operating um, so I think it goes about and, and and really what you said there is you know did they get the right information from the Gazette and did they understand the right way from the Gazette how to interpret the whole process uh, of coming back on level three um, and I think that is not a thing however you must remember with your body corporates and that, they've got their own laws and things and they can regulate as they wish to. If they say, no, 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 we're not in agreement with the Gazette that domestics are allowed now back, we still say to you, no, only in level two or something like that. Different story. Um, it's their law. They can do so. Oh God, thank you very much, Charles. You did clear up that question. Uh, then I have, I have a question here from Ronnie. Uh, what about office staff who will not wear a mask? 
I assume the question would be, what about office staff uh, telling the employer, I, I will not wear a mask? What, what, what can the employer do in that scenario? If there's, like I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, if the rule is there, the policy is there, that everyone must wear a mask, irrespective of who you are, you must, even if you the CEO, you must wear a mask then unfortunately you will wear the mask and if you do not i will place you under disciplinary process that can be either just a warning or a disciplinary hearing and a dismissal can be uh, be successful in this these proceedings thank you for that charles then from charlotte domestic air travel within south africa what documents do i need to prove it's for business purposes uh, it well goes about where you're going to travel and also with the affidavit that you do at the police station. Thank you for that. Then from uh, Soji, are gardeners allowed? Do you still require permits for work? A gardener? No. Like I mentioned, my gardening service is coming on Wednesday. They're coming to cut my lawn. Uh, they're back in business. I received an email also from them last week to say level three is opening. We're coming back to, 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 to work. Yes, I said to them, you know what's the standards? Social distancing, first of all. Secondly, they must all wear masks. No problem. Okay, thank you. And then uh, there's also a valid question from Wendy. Uh, and I like the, the, the question because I went out with a bicycle this morning very early as well. And the question she has is, in terms of exercise, are we still limited to a five kilometer radius of our home? No, there was no distance that, that's been declared now. And to say that exercising from um, out of home is open. You can exercise as long as you exercise and you apply social distancing and the mask, obviously. Thank you for that, Charles. And then from one of the companies, Fibertronic, are we allowed to travel from one province to the other province? If it's for business purposes, obviously. It's the same as you will fly from one destiny to another one, crossing a provincial border, but not outside South Africa borders. Okay, and then from Beverly, we have a question. Can one provide a generic agreement for those people over 60, the age of 60, that want to come back to work? Yeah, you can You can do a, how can I say, you can do a template, or, or not a template, but a general agreement to say, you know, that's the agreement between us. You know that you are placing yourself in a vulnerable position, that you can be contracted with this virus, but you opt to come back to work. So I'm happy, sign here, we're okay. Thank you. Then uh, we also have a question from one of our current clients, Alex. Um, Alexandra, she's from, from Pizza Perfect. Uh, just to inform everyone, you can uh, more than welcome to support them. It's a lovely company. The question is, <laughs> can fast, foods, uh, uh, fast food restaurants trade normal hours or do we still close at 7 p.m.? Um, you are still abounded by that. You are open, but you, you are still restricted by that on this stage. There has not mentioned any relax on that. That's why they're saying restaurants, pubs, and those things are still closed. So, and that's why my question mark was there to say, now, why don't they relax that I can go and fetch my own pizza instead of Uber or Mr. Delivery? But on this stage, you, they must still go through that uh, self, well, collection of, of, me, of meals. Thank you. And then from Charlotte, do domestics have their own type of permits? No, domestic will not uh, have a permanent. There's no need for a permit, like I said, in the Gazette. I, I don't find it in the Gazette. And you will also see that Almi Dupuisin, in my presentation, made, made mention of that. Where in that Gazette? is the permit. The permit was very uh, valid and, and, and regulated within level five and four, but now that everybody is welcome to go back to work except for people with underlying conditions and, and maybe people over eight, uh, 60, um, 
a domestic as well to be safe i would give them a letter to say i'm coming to this place i'm employed here and that's it um le level four for domestics was for people that was looking after your children or mind carers or uh people that well domestics that sleep in they could still continue doing so but now on level three every all domestics are welcome Okay, thanks. And then from Charlotte, um, Tavs, will it be extended? I think, uh, I don't know whether you will be able, Charles, to say yes or no, but maybe the question, if I can rephrase it then, do you think, Charles, that Tavs will be extended? Well, my personal opinion is I don't think it will be extended in the amount of the volumes currently between a level, well, level five and four, I think it will be now narrowed to other, uh, to lesser people that's been affected by, by this COVID-19. For instance, um, something like if you were closed down by the Department of Labor and for two or three weeks, you, your staff have to go and sit at home while they are, while you are getting your workplace in order, uh, that you can maybe, I say maybe, do application with that. Um, and then maybe for people that is underlining conditions and uh, your people older than 60 that cannot work from home because of the, the kind of work they are doing. So you're saying to them, just go sit at home, I'll apply for your relief group tax. I think that will still be uh, available. However, I cannot confirm this on the stage because like I said, everybody was basically now invited back to work. Okay, thanks. Um, I've got a question here from Zeldin, and we will open the Q&A session soon. Um, because the question is, how long do you have to wait? We have bills to pay. Um, so I'm not too sure what the, what the question exactly there is. Um, no, I know. <laughs> you know, okay. Uh, how long do we have to wait? We have bills to pay, Charles. <laughs> no, I fully understand that. Um, you know, Unfortunately, with, with the government and with uh, UIF, it's not like a paymaster that needs to pay you at the end of the month. I understand the situation of you, but I would suggest that you talk to your uh, people that you need to go and honor their payments, uh, like, for instance, Fushinis or Markham's or so, and just say, listen, I haven't received my money yet. I'm waiting for tax to be paid out. Uh, please give me another week or two. Um, you know, because I saw how the payments came through from, from TAS, it was not on payday, you know, they said to me, but we got paid already on the 25th, but there was no money coming from TAS, what now? Sorry, they only paid on the 5th of May, um, and now with this, with this fiber link that was uh, creating a huge problem for them at the uh, pay office of UIF, if I, if I couldn't call it that, um, Obviously, there's now a bottleneck scenario to get everybody uh, satisfied and paid. And also with the new uh, comments made by the Minister of uh, Employment and, and Labour to say, we want to, we as UIF wants to pay the employees directly. Thank you. Then we have a question here from Tony. Uh, Charles, can you please advise us on the guidelines about opening of student residences? from what date uh, sorry from what date will the employees be paid by the uif okay is that, that sounds like two 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 questions here in one okay so let's um, take question one please advise on the guidelines about opening of student residences um you know i'm i cannot elaborate a lot of that because the information uh, to any that came from the, uh, the, the, the Department of Education uh, is very mixed. There's, there's, there's a lot of mixed um, uh, emotions, can I rather put it that way. I would say and suggest that I will keep my eye on that, uh, and definitely I will, to see what's going to happen with the, the schools, the residents of universities, of colleges, etc. Um, and what is now the rollout plan of them? Because like I said now, the, they were set to open the schools today. Now it's prolonged to the 7th or 8th. And 
the minister was supposed to do an announcement. I think it was over the weekend. She postponed it also. So I'm sitting waiting for the minister. Maybe she's doing it currently, but I'm waiting to hear what she do have to say about the schools, etc. And then, um, you know, twenty. I think you must you must be very creative when you go and you say, okay, we're going to open the residence. That you know what is your own um, can I say challenges that you're going to face when you open for social distancing, sanitization, those kind of things. That's very important. Um, then, the usage of a, of a, of a combined um, bathrooms facility, those things, you know your environment, and that's the challenges you are, can already go and visit and know, you know, I'm going to sit with these challenges and how I'm going to to uh, handle that. And then we're waiting on the minister to give us the guidelines from there. And then from what date will the employees be paid by the UIF? Well, um, is it, if it's UIF, that means the, then it's an un, unemployment claim. Um, the moment it, it's been submitted and it was successful, accepted by UIF, the payment will, they said it will be within five or six days. Um, the task is the same. They said, well, within the application is, is done, they want to be paid out within a week's time. That was the minister that you said they want to do it as soon as possible. But bear in mind, like I said, there's a bottleneck scenario on the stage because of the fiber link that created a, a, a huge problem for them. Okay, thank you. Then I've got a question here from Tabu. Um, in the new UIF setup, will the uh, something uh, be required to apply to the UIF for the employees? even if the UIF wants to pay directly to the employee? Look, the, the TAF application must still go do, be done by the employer, all right? And still the same thing also here, yeah, the minister asked that we, if you need to apply UIF, the employer must do it on behalf of the employee. For instance, where the employee was retrenched uh, because of COVID-19, a lot of people lost their jobs also. And the same with, with TAFs. So TAFs, the spreadsheet for TAFs, you supply the banking details for the employer as the same banking details also of the employee. And it will then be submitted to uh, UIF offices. So um, if they if they chooses to now pay the employee directly, it will be on that spreadsheet. Thank you. So and they will have your banking details. Thank you. And then from Amanda, on TAFs, the application is different. They asked the question, is the employee list the same? Now, if the answer here is yes, do I still have to populate the employee list or will they use the same list as April? Yeah, more or less, will it be the same list of, of April? Because if your employee stays the same, um, the same is applicable for May application. So you will just reapply again with the same list. Thank you. And then will the employer be allowed to apply uh, to the UIF on behalf of the employee, Charles? Yes, uh, it, is a, a, it is a digital or a, a virtual application that you do for TAFs and for UIF. So employers can assist the employees with the applications of both. Well, mandatory it taps is uh, from the employer. Um, UIF, the minister last in, in even uh, level five, he started to say the employer must assist the employee with an application for UIF. That's our employees that lost their work or for ill benefit, that kind of thing. Thank you, Charles. And then from George, do I need to provide a permit for the person that transports my staff? If so, is it different to the one I provide for my staff? You know, that is public transport. Um, and you can see now how the, the approach is with the domestic. As long as it's a safe transport, public transport, as long as that provider sanitized and his standards for his vehicle and social distancing is there and not put in 20 people in a commuter vehicle 
uh, and said off the way he's supposed to be only put in 10, he will have problems. But I don't see why must he have a permit because he will be classified as basically a service provider, the same as public transport. From Berlin, is exercise from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or is it any time? Any time during the day, yes. But it, there is still, there is, look like there's still a curfew on, on what time you must stop doing your exercising. Thank you. And then you remember, I, sorry, yes. sorry, Peter, the, 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 the exercising was only limited in, in level four in the, sorry, in the morning from five up until nine. Now it's open for the whole day. Thank you, Charles. And then uh, if I'm looking to buy a new home, are agents allowed to show me uh, the properties? Yeah. If, you, if you're buying a new house, you want to go and see how the house looks like. Again, it's only about social distancing, applying the disciplines of a, of a mask, a shield, or whatever you want to do, uh, don't hand greet and and don't touch unnecessary and sanitize. Take your own sanitizer with. Thank you. And then from Rakhari, can I lay off staff and use them as skeleton staff? The skeleton staff has agreed to assist during this period. Okay. Uh, certain staff you want to lay off and certain staff you want to work, yes, you can do that. We talked that about... Uh, a temporary layoff. There is an agreement, a memorandum of agreement that you need to sign with the staff to understand that they are temporary lay laid off, but you can do so. Thank you. Then from Marlene, will I, uh, sorry, okay, will I be allowed to travel within the province for personal reasons, bearing that I will keep my safety in mind and the safety of others, or if I travel for business purposes within the province, do I need a company letter stating the purpose of my travel? Uh, you can expect some roadblocks still, as you listen to what the Mr. Minister Becky Kelly was saying um, about he will have more roadblocks going out. So to be safe and not to be sorry, rather have something to prove that you need to travel for business purposes. Sound off on the company letter. Yet. I cannot see the day cannot allow you to do so. Thank you. And then from Shulai Bolton, is there a specific timeline or period on when an employee can claim for the TARS benefit? No, look, there's a, there's a window period when, the, when TARS is opening. It's now, like I said, it's still open for May, but I think it's going to close by the end of this week. Then it's open for June already also. So the quicker you can apply for TARS, the better. Remember, TARS is for your whole workforce or the segment of your workforce that's not been working um, or that you only pay a certain amount of money and you want to fill it up with, with TARS. So if you talk about a person that's been laid off permanently, it is UIF and it must go through the normal UIF channels and there's no limited or time frame to it. I would say when you when you lay off somebody and there's a UIF already, process the UIF through UIF uh, portal and get it over and done. Thank you. And then from Kevin, Charles, can you please explain the employer's responsibility and the process with regards to an employee either having symptoms of COVID-19 or being tested positive for COVID-19? Okay. Now, that is a very sensitive question, and that's where I, when I started in my presentation, I said, you know, we're all humans, we're all humans with a heart, with feelings, with self-esteem, everything. Let's handle this COVID-19 or this coronavirus also with a little bit of uh, respect to one another. In fact, yes, um, the moment you know of a person that might be in contact with a person that contracted the uh, coronavirus, you may call that person in and say, listen, uh, that you've been in contact with any person that contracted a coronavirus, please be open to me because I'm going to give you a toll-free number to call. 
How do you feel? Are you healthy whatsoever? Um, now, normally what will happen in a case like this, if they say yes, you can immediately ask them to go and phone the toll-free number. The toll-free number is that 08, uh, 8000, 088, I'm, I'm not sure about that number now. <laughs> You've got me crossing on. But anyway, I'll get the number for you. Um, the toll-free number. Now, they do have a, a list of questions that they will ask the employee. And if there's one or two or three or so questions that's been spiked, positive, they will tell the employee, go and quarantine yourself and wait for uh, the health carer to come and do the test. Now, to do the test, and that is now the tricky part, it can take anything between four to five days. The results can anything between seven to 14 days. You're going to be lucky with seven days that you can get your results whether you are positive. We can see also on the news everywhere, it says that there's, there's a backlog on, on, on the results because of the amount of tests being done and they're also running into a bottleneck scenario. And I think they are addressing that very, very uh, quickly on, on that. Um, so, yeah, a person that's been identified with, with, uh, with uh, co co coronavirus and he informs you please don't let him come to the office and bring his sick note. You know, we've got very nice devices. There's a WhatsApp, do a WhatsApp on the certificate that it's clear and send it to you. And you can see that, you can print it. I mean, it's easy to email it to yourself and print it out and tell that person to stay at home up until that is finished. And then he or she may return back to the workplace. Remember, the sick leave is applicable from the day that the person is in quarantine. Thanks a lot for that, Charles. Um, Charles, we also have a, a school attending. And the question from the school is, and maybe for the delegates and their children as well, the question is, do we have to spray schools? We have to sanitize the entire school, yes, before the, the learners are back. But these spray booths, we just now saw over the weekend, it has been uh, banded. It said, because the World Health Organization said uh, a spray booth is not a good thing to spray a human being with. So to use it in schools or airports or something like that, it is not good. And the Minister of Health confirmed that uh, because it was raised the concerns by the World Health Organization. Thank you. And then from Mark, must a pregnant employee stay at home as soon as this is confirmed? Say again, Peter? Uh, must a pregnant employee stay at home as soon as the pregnancy is confirmed? You, you, you're breaking up there totally now. Um, sorry, Charles. Hopefully you can hear me. The yeah, I can hear you now. From, the question from Mark is, must a pregnant employee stay at home as soon as the pregnancy is confirmed? Yes, you can apply again through UIF uh, earlier to say that it's because of COVID-19, uh, the employee must stay through earlier at home because remember, it's not a, it's not an un, uh, underlining, uh, it is an underlining condition because of the pregnancy. And that person is very vulnerable on that stage. So it's for you as an employer, only good to, to do so. Okay, thanks. Then we have a question from Veruska, and I think we'll get to that a little bit later. What are the changes for the public transport in terms of the bus industry? Uh, Charles, I think that's quite an open question. Um, maybe we can have a discussion with Veruska. I'm just afraid that we won't be able to answer all the questions. Uh, but then we'll get to your, your question and answer, uh, Veruska. From Michael Liver, we have the tourism industry is unable to work as yet as borders have not been open for tourism as yet. I trust that that will probably be extended in this case. Uh, yes, um, for the tour, tour guides, there has been, only for the tour guides, I'm talking about them now. Um, I think there was an additional 
40 million rand set aside for them. And for the tourism as such, because of our borders are not open and we try to still limit the inter-provincial uh, uh, visiting or, uh, can I say, uh, yeah, visiting to into other province, provinces, um, obviously this, this, this uh, industry will still remain closed and tariffs will be still applicable to them. Okay, oh thanks a lot uh, for that, Charles. I think what we're going to do, I see there's another uh, four or five questions that we have not attended to. Um, just before some of the delegates are leaving, please bear in mind, if you need the starter pack to operate your business, pop me an email at cp at eecms.ca.za. We have a two hour turnaround time. As soon as I have your email, we escalate it to the relevant staff members. Within two hours, you will have all your policies to ensure that your business can operate completely. Um, what I'm going to do now, Charles, for the last couple of minutes, let's say 20 to 30 minutes, um, if there's maybe questions, because I'm just afraid this might be a specific question from a specific company and or industry. What you can do, if you go to the top right of your screen, ladies and gents, colleagues, you can maybe just unmute yourself and raise your question. If you have a question, just unmute yourself, ask your question and everyone will hear your question and then Charles will be able to elaborate on that. Any questions, please just unmute yourself and feel free to ask your question. Charles, I see here's a question from Ike as well. Are staff permitted to wear shields instead of masks? Or is this only permitted in conjunction with masks? No, you can either use the, the, the mask or the, or the shield. Um, you know, if you're going to, 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 into checkers, checkers use all their shelf packers, the, the cashiers, everything. It's only the shield. Um, now I've seen some of the companies like Food Lovers Market, Spar, um, who else is there that I've been to? Oh yes, uh, Diskem, um, as well as, uh, as, as Trix. They don't use any mask or shields uh, for the cashiers or the people in the, in the dispensary, that means in the chemist side. Um, they, they, they stand there without a glove, but in front of them, there's a big shield between you and the cashier. So the droplets will then splash onto the shield instead onto the cashier or the cashier's droplets onto you. So because of that shield between the two of you, they don't wear any masks. So you can see, you can use like a, well, listen to me when I started this morning, I said you can use either the mask or the shield or both it all depends on your environment and also company policy if you're in a company and you say you must wear the shield and you must wear the mask and you feel it's good for your company it's your policy but from myself the minimum will be either a shield or a mask thank you for that charles amanda i see amanda you are still in this webinar uh, I received a message that the answer was not very clear. The question, if list C is V is the same, etc., etc. Amanda, if you can maybe just unmute yourself and uh, just uh, rephrase and refrain your question again for us, please. Amanda, if you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. Are you there, Amanda? Okay, I, I see a, a question now again. Yeah, um, Amanda, I think you're in the house, yes. Okay, Amanda, yes. Your, your spreadsheet will remain the same for your CV, uh, CSV. 
Um, so if there's not one go, one name going out or one going in, you will do the same application with your new uh, application for June or for May. For May. So, um, and I see you saying here, uh, will the system tabs use the previous list? It will not use automatically. You have to fresh apl apply again. So it's not something that can repeat itself. You have to reapply with it. So whether that 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 um, Excel spreadsheet do not change, you still have the same names, everything. You submit it with your new application to to Tash. I hope that now answer your your question. Thank you. And then from Nia, we have a question. In case of infection, what support can the employer give to the employees? Well, there's not much that you can do if if the person if the employee is affected obviously he cannot come to the workplace and there's nothing that you can do as employer and the only thing that you can do as employer is that you must see that you pay out the sick leave first of all secondly is that you um well uh, and, and and ensure that the sick leave has been processed in terms of payment and that's it and you know because your health care is kicking in your now to look after that person, give them medicine, uh, tell them what to do, um, and ask them to remain in, uh, can I say, in-house, in quarantine. Okay, then from now we have a question, maybe it might have been answered. Hi Charles, do we need a permit to cross metro borders into the rest of the province for work purposes? Like I said, yes, because of the statement from Mr. Becky Cleland, Minister of uh, Police, he mentioned over the weekend that he will still have roadblocks and he will still question you if you do have a modus operandi of going there with the essence of going to visit friends or you're going there for work pur uh, purposes. And remember also what Regulation 33 is saying that you may not go and visit your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case might be, maybe your ex wife. <laughs> But uh, rather have something from the office on a letterhead as well with, with a David if you cross borders. That means internal borders in South Africa only. That will be safe to say you are safe. Um, I'm not going to rule it out because the Minister of Police was quite adamant about the, 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 uh, the story, uh, well, the mentioning of these permits. Now, I don't see any new permits. I'll just say a letter containing that you are engineer and you need to go to a mine in Rustenburg. You're coming from Cape Town and you need to go and sit there and the affidavit is attached to that. No problem. Okay, thanks. And then another question here from Tony. Uh, Charles, what is the procedure to be followed if an employee and or a resident in the hostel is tested positive after screening the uh, after the screening process is followed? Well, obviously, if that screening is 38 degrees, the person that's been screened must immediately ask to quarantine him or herself immediately. So I don't know if your res uh, residents do have a quarantine center where they can actually phone the parents to come and pick them up um, now what and i can re maybe refer to this whatsapp video that i received from a school in i think it's in pictoria that they showing the children how they will come in is the first is a is a dispenser where you can have your sanitized your hand sanitized then a screening with the temperature after that you go and lock yourself in to say you are coming in as a school ch uh, child or user and then the person will ask certain questions uh, and then from there proceed into school or if they pick him up at the testing site to say you must go immediately from here to the quarantine area and the telephone is there call your parents to come and collect you so you can go and quarantine so the moment your screening process picked up a person with 30 uh, degrees plus quarantine immediately they must do that they must call that toll-free number and they must in your scenario to attorney 
where you do have uh, children, the father, the mother, or whoever must come and collect the, the, the child. Um, in a resident, in the, in maybe the, the, the uh, father, mother is not nearby and they must come from a far about town, I would consider that you will have somewhere that this person can alone be quarantined and away from your other students. But the moment you pick it up, they must phone that toll-free number so that they can be locked it on there and that the test can be done by the healthcare workers and the, 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 the results can then be uh, sent to the um, child or to the employee. Okay, Charles, then from Kevin, we have a question here. We have warehouses that have up to 70 people. If one person is tested positive, do all staff need to be tested despite correct PPE and social distancing measures? No, that can be, uh, if the, if you, well, if your process was that you picked a person up with this uh, possible infection as they enter your workplace, obviously immediately you stop and you say, go back, Guarantee yourself and let the care, um, healthcare workers assist you. But you don't have to then immediately close down everybody and say, no, everybody must now go and, and test. You, you're going to, to allow you into an ordeal of, of confusing and people that's, that don't know what, what's going on and that. Um, I don't know when was this screening done? But normally there's, there's, a exit, there's an entrance and exit screening minimum. I always say, look, you do have a staff canteen. People are going there to have some uh, uh, lunch or something like that. Um, do a midday screening also. So at least you are safe. But it's not compulsory. It's only for myself as a suggestion. Oh, thanks a lot for that, Charles. Um, we have a question here from Donnie. Does the employer need application for new stage three CIP certificate? No. C CPIC is your, to show that you are essential services. And that was applicable in level five to four. Now all businesses, except the ones that have been mentioned in the Gazette that may not open, so that essential services certificate, uh, I mean, gardening services, not uh, essential services, I'm coming to cut my lawn. As long as they do have the mask and social distancing. Thanks a lot for that, Charles. Charles, um, I believe that we went through the majority, if not all of the questions. Ladies and gents, colleagues, attendees, please. Do you have questions? Please just unmute yourself and then ask your question. Everyone in this meeting, we have 55 companies still attending. Everyone will be able to hear your question. And when uh, Charles provides the answer, everyone will hear the answer as well. I'm sure there has to be more questions. If you can just press on unmute and ask your question, please. I see there's a question from Patrick. Um, Patrick, uh, can uh, an office run a H, um, HVAC system that's your central heating cooling system? Uh, Patrick, yes, you can do so, but you know that's a ventilation system. And it is a very scary thing. It depends on the size of your, of your building. And I will suggest here yeah, that you rather, if you want to use that, that system, that you rather get somebody in from a uh, health and safety um, occupational site to come and assess your system, whether the filters is co correct and whether the filters can assist uh, or can, can assist the, 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 uh, the limitations of the spreading of the coronavirus. Uh, because, you know, these systems go from system to system. You can get a wall unit system that runs with the, with the whole thing through the roof and all that. And that's why I'm saying, once again, I don't know what is your flu capacity, your floor capacity that you want to use this system for. I hope this answers your question, Patrick. Charles? 
Yo. Um, Jacques here from Zamira. Would you like to find out if um, pregnancy is confirmed and due now to, as you previously said, uh, underlying condition, if the person or the worker now has to go off before the nine months, uh, what must happen? Must she now claim then from tax or the company for her in terms of tax or how does it work? No, you will not apply for a pregnancy through tax. You will apply through UIF. And obviously the medical practitioner who diagnosed the pregnancy will obviously advise the employee to rather go to the employer and ask for uh, uh, early maternity leave. So that falls in the same procedures as maternity leave. And the doctor will certify the pregnancy and that she do have an underlying uh, medical condition. And that's the reason why there's an early um, reason for uh, maternity leave. Uh, Charles, can I just clarify? Um, so in other words, instead of the normal four months maternity leave, uh, a person could now end up going on maternity leave for nine months, or 10 months. So will you then be able to claim from UIF for those full period? Well, obviously you, you, can, you can do so. Um, it all depends on what is the partner of labor, but I know that certain instances where I worked with complicated um, pregnancies that the Department of Labor, the UIF system, uh, will accept it as long as a medical practitioner advised that it is correct to send that person on maternity leave. So, from our side then, um, is, it, is it the decision of the worker then to go off on early maternity leave or month, is it our obligation as company to say, listen, due to the uh, confirmed pregnancy, we rather prefer you to go off. Look, it's, at the end of the day, not you or myself is a, a, a medical practitioner. So you have to work it through the medical practi practitioner who diagnoses the employee. So that means you will write a, a letter to the medical practitioner who's on that um, certificate to say the, um, the, the lady is pregnant, to say, kindly provide us with a prognosis whether you advise us to place this person on early maternity leave due to the COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And once that comes back from the medical practitioner, then you can attach it to your application. You can send it through and say, that is what the doctor is saying. Please assist this lady. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. My pleasure. Hello. Hi. Uh, I was speaking to Joel Ngoma from S Mobility Security. I have this question. Hi. Yes, I have a question uh, concerning with the COVID-19. If the employee tested and stays at home for a period of 14 days quarantine and never get a result, may I allow him or her to come back on his duties after 14 days? No. That person remains there till the results is out. Like I said earlier on, there's a bottleneck scenario on the stage with the, with the results because there's a lot of tests done, uh, done and there's, it looks like limited people that can help, but um, the, the rollout of these results are not within 14 days. Thank you. All right. So you must remember, they will tell you, the, 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 the person has been diagnosed with coronavirus and he will be in quarantine for this period. Now, they might, might say to you, uh, it's the 14 days started from the day that it was tested up until now, or they will give you 20 days, whatever the case might be. But you will see on their certificate that they say when the person may return back to work. Um, good day, Charles. It's Neo here from the Fuel Trust. Hello, uh, So my question is that, um, what is the status with regards to, to the test? Are they done for free or um, 
one has to pay for them. And um, if test has to be done, who is eligible to pay them? Is it the employer or the employee? Okay, very good question. Thank you very much. Um, one, the government test is for free. Nobody pays for that. Not employer, not employee. If you want to, if you decide by yourself or myself, I want to be tested because I think I've got the, the, the virus. Then I need to go to a private clinic or private uh, place and they will charge me. Now around about 375 rent to test. All right. But that you will pay yourself. If you're the employer and you say, Charles, I want you to go and t test you, obviously it's a, it's a choice from the employer to instruct me to do so, and then I'll go, but then the employer must pay me. All right. Thank you very thank much. You your, thank you for your question, it's a good question. <laughs> Any questions from anyone else? Feel free to unmute yourself and raise your question. Ladies and gents, colleagues, one last opportunity. Any further questions from your side? Feel free to unmute yourself. I think, Peter, just from my side, that I want to maybe talk about the the mask and the shield now there's nowhere really defined um how the shield must look and that kind of thing that's why i'm referring to examples that i experienced myself like with the clicks the pick and paste and that um where the shield is not a shield that the cashier will wear on their head and my goodness where's my shield i think it's in the car I've got a shield also, and I'll tell you the reason why I'm using the shield is when I, in meetings with uh, delegates, and I put on my mask and my glasses, it just foggy, totally, I can't see, all right, so when I put on the, the shield, there's at least a little bit of ventilation coming through that do not fog my, uh, or, or make any difference to my sightseeing. So that's that's the reason why I'm using a, a, a shield, and and it's properly protected around my head, down here, so nowhere the droplet can go to one of the attendees in the meeting, um, and it's very important um, that 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 is the protection. So looking into, let's take for instance, uh, clicks, that shield there in front of the cashier and in front of you, it protects both sides. Nobody can get a, a droplet from each other. And that is the, that is the reason why we we're wearing masks. Um, and you will see also what I'm calling these other things is a, is a banner. You put it like a scarf around your neck and you just pull it up. Um, now, there's, there's also very creative ones of that coming out, but you can use it. However, if you look into the Gazette, they say a three-layer mask. Not just one layer mask, it's a three layer mask. And the material shop next to CCMA in Cape Town, I saw when I was standing there to, in the queue waiting to go in, I saw there was, they saying mask, um, something mask guest or mask, some material um, that is the inner piece of that mask. So, yeah, bottom line is you can use a shield. Or you can use a mask and if you're in a call center and you put up a nice perspex thing here or a shield around you you can sit without your mask as long as you protect yourself and the other parties from the droplet because this virus is airborne we cannot tell how far it goes if i cough you can find it very far we added um, Peter, who's that, uh, that uh, sister that was on your medical sister? Um, she uh, told us. Uh, sister Shavandra van der Merwe. Van der Merwe, that's right. To say, if you cough, your, your, your droplets even can go further than two, two meters. So it's very important that, um, and it is not really somewhere casting stone to say, 
1.5 is the is the safest way um, or that you must have it one meter two meters or 1.5 but the average is 1.5 Thanks for a lot for that, Charles. Uh, to all the de delegates, the 50 companies still remaining in this webinar, uh, please remember if you visit the YouTube channel and you type in, in your search option EECMS, uh, we do have that available on YouTube as well, where Sister Shavandre van der Merwe had the discussion on uh, how to fit the mask, et cetera, et cetera. It's open to anyone that wants to visit the site. Uh, it's no cost or anything. The videos, everything is on there. Any any other questions from any of the remaining delegates? Uh, uh, sorry, yes, answer. Uh, um, you may raise your question. Thanks, Charles. Uh, Jacques again from Zambia here. We just yes. like to know if we have an employee that says positive or becomes sick, we put him in quarantine um, at work, he goes home, he puts himself in self-quarantine, gets tested and he's positive. From there, he goes to hospital. He exceeds or exhausts his existing sick leave. Is the company that is still liable to pay him, say, for 30 days that he's now in the hospital? Say he's he exhausted his uh, 15 days sick leave um, due to the um, quarantine at home. And then from there, he goes to the hospital and gets treated. Now, for that period, um, who is, how do we pay that person? Is it then through tax, uh, UIF, or is the company liable then to pay him his full salary? Doug, that's a very good question. Yes. Um, Jock and all delegates, like I mentioned, there's a bottleneck scenario with the test results, first of all. So secondly, is your period going into sick leave going to be longer than 14 days? Now, the UIF make provision for ill benefits. And in my previous, in, and I'm talking on the correction here, Peter, but I think in my previous uh, presentation, I did make mentioning about the ill benefits and how to apply for it. Now, ill benefits is a normal UIF application. Now, the only time that you can apply for that ill benefits is when you get the results back from, uh, from the health uh, department and you then only can apply because you have to substantiate your application with the outcome of the results from the Department of Health. So, you don't have to pay him for the 21 days, for the 30 days, that will be ill health. Because the act is very clear. Any person who, is, who took ill for a period more than 14 days, such person may apply for relief through UIF. Does that help you, John? Well, thank yes, you. thank you very much. Uh, Charles, okay. I've got another question here from a compliance officer. Are the thermal scanners that's regulated by SINA standards for accuracy and cali calibration? We've seen some fake devices doing the rounds on social media. Yeah, there's a, there, I've seen a lot of things on social media. I've seen it in, in, in the media also where they tested some of these uh, thermometers and there's a point differentiation of a point one, a point two, and that. Um, I think you must you must go and to see who you who's your your supplier when buying these thermometers. Because there's no regulations around about the thermometer. And in fact it just came out with coronavirus quickly. So um, it's not like with your with your alcohol tester, the dragger which needs to be, uh, all these test beats need to be done and you must have a certificate and all that nonsense. Um, this is a device I've been tested a couple of times here in, in Cape Town when I was in the malls and that. And the, the temperature was quite 35 point and then some places will be say 35.3 and the other place will be 35.1, so on. 
But yeah, you, when you buy something, buy it from somebody that's reputable and not trying to make a buck. That's all I can say, just to be safe. Um, and, the, and the amount of these things is about a thousand rand each. And but like I said, a reputable supplier will, will sell you only the real McCoy. Thank you for that, Charles. Then uh, we have a question from Lovemore. Can an employee sue the employer if the contract COVID-19 in the workplace with PPE supplied and all the necessary screening has been done? Obviously, to talk about a lawsuit, you have to, to prove negligence, gross negligence on the employer's side. And how you're going to approve, to prove that is going to quite be a lengthy thing. So first of all, uh, to sue the employer um, and everything is in place, it's going to be quite difficult to, to get to a lawsuit where a court is going to decide in your favor. However, it's not been throw it out of that. But if your, if your process of screening and your application to PPEs is in place, I don't see that you must fear anything for a lawsuit. Um, but when there is not a good process, obviously the employer needs to get the wake up call here and say, I better go back to my, my roots, sharpen my pencil and get things in place. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Charles. I see it's 12 o'clock now. Uh, just before we end the meeting, please, ladies and gents, colleagues, if any of your questions have not been answered, pop me an email. You also have Mr. Kinnear's details. Please feel free to uh, pop him an email as well. Uh, I think what I also need to mention is to remember that we supply and provide you with COVID-19 starter pack policy to ensure that your operations um, are basically able to, to proceed with. However, Charles will be able to do certain policies should it need to be industry specific. Okay, so should you require a specific policy to operate within your specific industry, please request a quotation from Charles and I'm sure that he will be able to assist based on the quotation that he will provide to you and just to ensure that you will be able to operate fully within your industry with maybe your specific company and or industry requirements pertaining to your operations. Charles, Peter, I can I just answer Mark quickly there? Yes. I see so his question there is to say, if an employee comes to work every day and becomes ill and tested positive, what is the procedure for the rest of the employees who were in contact with this employee uh, um, previous um, to his uh, positive outcome. Okay, uh, Mark, yeah, it is quite a catch-22, yeah. I would say um, that your screening process must be 100% in place, um, that you can monitor all your employees, and that you also can maybe just interview your employees and say, you know, are you, are, were you so close in contact that you not wear a mask, or whatever the case might be, that you could be affected, otherwise, just the person who's doing your, your, your um, screening will normally be your compliance officer, that the compliance officer must keep a tight eye on to these employees. And if there's one or two, the moment it starts to be three, then you know you, you do have a problem um, that you need to address with all the employees. But on this stage, it might be a person that's been contracted with the, 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 with the virus outside of the workplace, and now he's coming into the workplace. Might be traveling with one another, but they were working, uh, wearing masks. Um, I would say, yeah, yeah, you've got there a bit of a gray area, but just keep your, your screening in place. It's a very good investment to do, um, like the, 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 the health and safety uh, agent was talking about these thermometers. It's a good investment so far. Um, but like I said, do it through a reputable supplier, not just every Tom, Dick and Harry that's around the corner that wants to sell these things. Because there's a lot of uh, emails that came to people um, advertising that. Um, and I would always advise, rather go to people that knows the healthcare, that knows these key things 
that they are selling it. Don't go just to any company and buy it from them. Thanks a lot, Charles. I see another question uh, here from Heike. If someone becomes positive at work, would it be classified as an injury on duty? Yes. It will fall under COID, uh, COID um, your uh, occupational health um, insurance, uh, and the normal process for injury on duty must be processed. Um, and obviously that person must be going in quarantine and you must see where that person actually contracted the virus. Is it in the workplace or where the person is working? For instance, the person was working in uh, ShopRite Checkers as a shelf packer and he contracted the day because one of, well, yeah, one of our ShopRite uh, Checkers is here in uh, Amin Bloberg Strand um, has been shut down first and then two weeks later shut down for another two weeks um, so yes you have to go and, and see how this uh, the person contracted the virus but yeah I know it falls under health and safety thank you very much for that Charles um, okay I see here from Robin any idea where I could get a list of the government quarantine facilities Quarantine facilities, um, the, only the government will uh, send you there. And that is, um, I think you can go onto the website, but it, it must come from the government to say the person must go in self quarantine or they will send the person to quarantine. Um, I know there's a couple of hotels here in Cape Town, especially there's one in. Um, in Cape uh, in Bloberg Strand, that's um, a guarantee, uh, but it come it must come from the health department or the Department of Health to tell the person to report there. And obviously, they do have the way of communication to that hotel and the and the caregivers that side, and they will then uh, be admitted into that quarantine um, facility. So we can't go there ourselves. It is when only Department of Labor, after, uh, sorry, Department of Health is saying that mm -hmm. you need to go into quarantine. In the most times is self quarantine um, that you can go into your room, you shut the door, and everybody in the house is that side, and you stay in your room, and they know maybe it's about self discipline, um, and also if there's the capability or the well, well, yeah, if the facility is there to self quarantine you. Otherwise, they will send you to a quarantine place. And I think it will be coming out clearly out of the interview that the health carer will have with the person that's been contracted with the virus. Thank you, Charles. We have a question here from Vic. Is there still a restriction of the number of people per, ve uh, per vehicle? Indeed, Vic, yes, there is still. The social distancing has not been lapsed. It's not been relaxed. It's still there. So 1.5 meters is still in place. So obviously you can't crowd a taxi. Although I must say I've seen some dangerous points here. Yes. The same with buses. The same with my city bus here in Cape Town. Um, this morning I was listening to hard radio and they were saying, guys, my city bus is running. Yes, now um, right throughout the day, remember limited space because of so, uh, social distancing. So it's still there. So it's still there. We cannot overcrowd a vehicle. Um, we must still apply social listening and mask. And that was also said on, on, on the radio. And mask. You must wear your mask everywhere, anywhere. That's it. And you don't want to believe me how I felt like and <clears throat> don't let me don't let me express myself how I really felt. Yesterday I I just need to go and buy a bread. And I went somewhere else, pick up something there, and I had my mask on. But when I in the car, I was alone. I took my mask off and I put it down. And I realized, oh, that bread, I must get it. It's Monday, and you know. Anyway, I got to the to the shop and I quickly want to run in and just grab the bread. I've got the money even for the bread, really. And without my mask, and the lady is very kind and very polite to say, Sir, sir, sorry, no mask, no entrance. 
I felt like, uh, well, I could be slammed in front of myself <laughs> on my on my face. But yes, it happened. Um, Charles, maybe if we can try and answer this. The question is, as a fleet manager for a tourism company, what protocols are in place for vehicles? And then Zeldin mentioned, sorry, uh, she meant for the cleaning of vehicles. What protocols yeah. are in place for, I would assume, the cleaning of vehicles? Cleaning of vehicles, you will, you will get somebody that can sanitize your vehicles or that you can get a sanitized system um, where you can spray the vehicle inside with the sanitizer um, every time it's been used. Uh, obviously, uh, your vehicle has to also contain the sanitizer, which the driver will see that everybody do sanitization to themselves. Um, but there's not really something about set in the Gazette, which I can recall, to say that is a standard. The standard is about only to sanitize, clean the vehicle. Um, my vehicle was taken the other day because of a flat wheel at the back. Um, uh, it was a slow puncture. So I phoned the company up and I said to them, guys, I see you are working at my place. And so they say, no, sir, we're coming to fetch your vehicle and we will then deliver it. And when they deliver it, it was through HiQ. When they deliver it, they gave me a little certificate to say this company sanitized your vehicle after we finished and I, I drove your vehicle with this hand gloves i'm going to remove it and put it into this plastic um because your car is sanitized so that was quite professionally done but really there's no there's no really protocols or, or disciplines pla placed in the gazette how you must clean it as long as you sanitize your clean your vehicle inside after every use so, uh, because we, the question mark still about the virus, we don't know how long the, the virus is alive on A, piece of paper, B, a table, C, a laptop, or your vehicle's seats. That's unfortunately the thing. I hope I answered your question, Zeldin. Yeah, uh, thanks, sir. Zeldin, if I may ask, what, how big is your vehicle? Uh, we got um, 36 vehicles in our fleet. Uh, can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. 36 vehicles in our fleet. Okay, you've got 36. Are they, are they, are they like taxi vehicles or bigger uh, than that? We got 23, which are the Quantums. Uh. Um, and then we got um, private vehicles, which are um, Lexus, the new Lexus. Um, Revs. I would and all that. Okay, okay, no, that's fine. Um, out of experience, I do travel now and then with Uber, um, and uh, I must be honest with them, they were very creative, some of them putting up a shield between the passenger, because I choose to sit always at the back, between the passenger and the driver, they put up a shield there themselves, and I always compliment them for their creativeness, you know, um, and then before we took off, they will say to me, sir, please sanitize. And I will hold the bottle and sanitize my, uh, give me some sanitization. Um, and uh, then we go. Uh, so, and I asked the one driver, how regularly do you sanitize your vehicles? And he said to me, you know, we do it once a day um, because we don't know about the, the virus and where there can be the virus, but we try our best. It's not always practical for them to do it every, every time that they transport me now to go and sanitize. So I accept it because I did not touch anything else than I was sitting there to be dropped off and that, that's it. And I wear my mask because they will not allow you also without your mask, they will say, sorry, you're not coming into the vehicle without your mask. Yeah, I've so, seen but, those, uh, the, sorry, I've seen those um, dividers available at my coffee um which we, we are intending buying, buying from them. It will help yeah, indeed, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nothing that you must do it, but I think it's only for your employees' protection, first of all, secondly, your customers. In this um, yeah, uh, rather be, I say, rather be safe than sorry. sorry. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, Thanks, Zeldin. Okay. Thank you, Charles and Zeldin. 
Any questions from anyone uh, still attending here? Um, yes, it's Neo here from the Field Trust. I've got a question. Yes, Neo. Yes, so we are a very small organization of five people and um, our offices um, are in the, 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 the premises that we are using are of a very big company. So my question, and they observe, you know, um, COVID-19 protocols. So as we enter, you know, the, the main gate, uh, we, uh, everybody who enters is required to, you know, take the temperatures, do the screening. So my question is that as a small company that is housed there, are we, is it also necessary for us to do our own screening uh, uh, when we enter our offices, even though the screening was done at the main gate? No. That, that, that's uh, another good question, yes. Um, no, no, you don't need that. You, you, um, you're already being screened and you're a small company of five people. As long as you do have an, an, an agreement, whether it's now verbally or in writing, um, to say, look, if one of us is tested positive with corona, or that you see our temperature is high, more than 38 or 38, will you inform us so that we can process the person? And that, you, that your staff, the other five or the other four, understand how it will be if that one of them are identified to contract the virus. Okay, now thank you very much. Okay, okay, Neo, pleasure. Thanks a lot, Neo and Charles. Colleagues, any other further questions? Again, to everyone, I will email the video once the production team has edited it and everyone will receive this video. Please, if you have any further questions, if you need industry-specific policies, please liaise with Charles. He will provide you with a quotation and then, of course, one can take it from there. Uh, Charles, from our side here, out of... Uh, out of uh, Chile, Pretoria, thanks a lot for your much valuable time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Peter, and thank you to all the participants. Once again, uh, we in here together. And be safe. Have a good day. Enjoy. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot, Charles. All the delegates, thank you very much. As Charles mentioned, please thank keep you. safe. I will end the meeting now. Thanks a lot for your valuable time. EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online. Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more traveling or boardroom bookings. We bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information center for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended Act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees Agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22.5 million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties. 
increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees, effective transformation, and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level 4 broad-based black economic empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labour Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions, and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand, and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service.